Hi YouTubers, <laughs> you've joined me at a very exciting time. This is the first review copy of Renegade and it's just arrived so I don't normally give unboxings but how could I not when it was my own game. <laughs> this is amazing. Now first off this is a review copy right so um, Venture Point Games who are publishing Traditionally, they've always produced in-house, uh, print-on-demand, but this is going to go to Kickstarter and it's going to be produced um, kind of professionally in a factory. Um, so this is not going to look like this. You're not going to have <laughs> you're not going to have the same cover. You're not going to have the same piece of box. Um, this is a press kit, all right, and all the components are going to be completely different. All right, so artwork is pretty pretty solid we we're, we're, we're nearly there and yeah that's all that's all going to persist and there's going to be stretch goals on the kickstarter and all that kind of stuff so there's going to be extra components uh, that you're going to see in the final game hopefully if it funds and if it hits those if it hits those stretch goals here we go this is just a sample of what the back of the box might look like <laughs> really exciting. This is excellent, excellent. It says, Renegades, a game where your hackers renegades in a dystopian future. Humanity is on the brink of disaster, taking over cities all over Japan. It's a supermassive computer mother. You'll hack into her five networks, uh, her network of five servers, powered by one of four SMC supermassive computers, bringing their own styles of defences, countermeasures that will thwart our efforts to hack into this into this network it's co-op um, or solitaire you know me the first thing I did was build this as a solo game and um, it's kind of a bit strange I guess because solo came first and then it was scaled up to add co-op on top so um, I mean I always knew it was going to be a multiplayer game not solitaire only but you know the initial the initial dream was to build a game, the kind of game that I want to play, uh, solitaire. It's, it's a funny thing. Oh well, I won't say anymore. Let me just show you what's in here. We'll we'll save all that other stuff another time. So yeah, you're not going to have the slip sleeve. You know, it's going to be um, it'll be something like the quality of. Dawn of the Zeds, I guess. So, you know, this kind of box. Traditional box, board, cards, yeah. Punched tokens, all that kind of stuff. Not the little sooty sleeve that you, <laughs> you know, uh, thing that you see in, in, a, in a traditional Rich Point Games game. But this is what reviewers are going to see. This is what we're going to demo to you guys. I'm going to do a playthrough video. Of course I will. Um, you know, we're going to get hopefully um, stretch actually I think I think base out of the box will be um, a screen printed die not stickers so this is just you know what traditionally victory point games would have produced a, a die with stickers um, we're not going to do that we're going to have screen printed and heat transfer I think it is I'm not sure what the process is uh, Dion and Grant from victory point games they're the guys they're the marketing guys they know what all the components are about and, and Noel. So yeah, upgraded components, bigger dies, we're gonna have these custom potentially some custom dies with some nice graphics on. Uh, different counter sheets. Oh, but everything looks awesome. I almost don't want to punch it because it's my game, but it's really nice. This is the first time I've seen Clark's artwork printed. Um, we've already updated the server tiles. They're going to be bigger than this as well. Um, and the artwork's changed because we wanted to use. I think we'd, what um, what Victory Point Games do is they they put all their components through like a colorblind filter, like so it, you you can tell. So I think you know if if red and yellow are the same and blue and green look the same, um, they'll know. Um, so what we've done and what Clark's done, the artist is actually change the the icons so instead of seeing just these hexes on each tile 
there's going to be different images on each tile to separate them apart. Uh, there's already different images on the different tokens. These are the contaminants that you can lay down. Um, so contaminants, these are installations that you can install. These are double-sided. Um, so let's say they've got different icons to show you that this is a, a replicator, this is a propagator. These tokens, I'm going to punch one out, they're going to be different size, obviously for the final game. Um, replicants on one side, viruses on the other. Viruses are destructive attacks that you can hack into the system with and replicants are deceptive attacks. This is Heti Magnetics standee. Again, these will be different. They'll have plastic stands. Um, I think they're looking at changing the artwork on these as well. But, you know, still cool. And, yeah, there's Hetty. So she's, I mentioned her because that's her, her talent is deceptive. So she's got a special ability that is focused around deception. Tilda Sweet in here, she's all about uh, data, information. So hers, her ability is all about information. Ocean, Ocean Noro, he's um, he's destructive, so his ability is all around viruses. Um, Monty Quantum, his is all about cognition. Okay. Um, Monty's a man of few words. He keeps himself to himself. He says he's a scientist, not a hacker, with a fondness for chaos theory, and he's regarded as a techno shaman by his peers. It's really cool. I, I really enjoyed creating the backstories to these characters. And Alan Emmerich put together the the layout of these these player reference sheets. They're going to be double sided. You're going to see a lot in the final game. You're going to see we hit the stretch goals, either way they're going to have stuff on the back even if you don't. Um, we'll see, we'll see what they do with the reverse side but yeah Clark's reworking these so they're going to get a little bit of um, a little bit more graphic design for the final game. So there we are, that's it. I'll show, I haven't shown you the cards, I should show you the cards. Every player gets his or her own deck. Come on Ricky, get them out, there we go. This is yeah these are basic decks so they got an icon here in the bottom right that's going to show again the card quality is going to be different these are going to be more glossy and so on for the uh, final game so here's Hetty she's the yellow deceptive character so her deck's going to be slightly modded and um, she's going to have different slightly different cards to other players his Monty's deck he's this is green so they've got an icon in the bottom right to show you whose deck is whom uh, these are countermeasures. These are things that the SMC, the network that we're going to be fighting against, they're going to be putting up countermeasures and they're going to have some real nasty effects on the back. Um, this one's a gold one. There's three levels. There's copper, silver, gold. There's a there's a goal. And these are kind of like short-term goals to get you through the game. You're going to, you're going to be seeing through copper, silver, gold lay, um, cycles in the game and they get progressively more difficult and each one of these countermeasures will offer a short-term goal so the idea is that we're being um, employed by the renegades who are fighting against um, the government uh, the governors who have, have, have kind of inadvertently unleashed the SMC's on the world. The SMC's are uh, created from a neural, neural net work of the population. The po populations had these neural implants that have, um, they called them the harvests, where they, they harvest the, the, the knowledge and the, the, um, the, the, the thinking, the thoughts of, of humankind um, to create these supermassive computers. And the Renegades' aim is to, to liberate mankind uh, from the SMCs and the control, because although the SMCs Get, uh, kind of create this peaceful society, a society where we don't have free will, we don't have you know, religion anymore, there's no, there's no faith, there's no freedom, there's no liberty. Um, 
there's no crime either, but you know, renegades don't want that. These the renegades, these are the you know the the, the corporation or the, the government, they think of them as, as sewer rats really, but they're the good guys. The bad guys are the good guys. We play the bad guys, if you like, and we're trying to um, overcome uh, these these SMCs or make them less potent, less powerful. So we're never going to destroy these things. What we're going to, our, what our objective is, is to hack in. Um, we're going to have a series of objectives that the renegades, our our renegade leaders, want us to achieve, and the SMC is going to put up certain countermeasures. And if we succeed then we've kind of you know we've hit the we've hit the SMC if we fail then the SMC is going to hit us um, the way it is though they I mean these are countermeasures so and you're going to find that the game can be tricky but I wanted it to be challenging uh, these countermeasures if you succeed they're going to hit you if you fail they're going to hit you hard <laughs> okay so yeah, I mean in copper, uh, in the first the first series of objectives, in actual fact, the successes can be rewarding. The failures, less rewarding, uh, or even hit, hurt you just a little bit. But in gold, yeah, they're going to hurt you bad, whichever way. But potentially game-killing. If you don't succeed in completing the objectives on these gold, silver, they could be game-killing. They could actually force you to lose the game. They won't in copper. All right. So that's the countermeasures. These are the, oh, they look great. This is Viking. This is one of the SMCs you'll face. There's different levels of SMC. So there's not just one um, layer of variability in here. There's a variable network setup. There's a variable SMC. There's variable countermeasures, um, variable player abilities, variable deck. Um, Viking is one of four um, SMCs that you can take on. Um, Viking is kind of one of the hardest. Alpha Moby, you should be able to succeed at, at beating Alpha Moby nine times out of ten. Viking, maybe one time in three, you'll succeed. We'll see. We'll see. Um, okay, Mother, the, the ultimate. She's she's very difficult to beat. All right, and these cards, these are advanced cards. So there's a little bit of deck building going on in here. You have a basic deck, and then you can upgrade your basic deck. Okay, so we've got these basic cards. You've got a deck of 15 cards to start you off. And you're going to swap in and out basic cards with advanced cards. They have a cost. So cards are going to give you, like this is destruction, this is leadership, this is deception. Um, this one's going to cost three cognition. And these advanced cards, they have a, an execute ability or a kind of an immediate ability. Or support uh, an ability that kind of supports you. So not only do they provide you with the resources you need to carry out actions, it's an action-based game, uh, but they also give you special abilities. So your deck's going to get more versatile. And the idea really is is that this deck represents the com the commands, right? So you're you've gone off to the electric she sheep, which is a, a local bar where all the um, all the all the hackers, all the renegades hang out, and it's from there that we jack into the network and do our hacking. Uh, but in uh, the Hack Shack, as, we, as it's been nicknamed, um, we're going to have a, a, a support network around us. And we're going to be able to put commands together, like this, and turn them into a complex command, a program, a complex program. Okay, and This becomes part of our deck. And that complex program can then be combined with other cards to become to, to create more complex effects. So that's themati thematically how it works and we had to get the wolf in here this is the sidekick okay so purple these ones are they cost a lot but they have kind of super super powers uh, they're more complex programs that you can run um, so you're going to be creating this network of servers I'm going to show you these I can pop them out like I say these hopefully will be double sided as well these are like um, the regular server tiles. They will be a little bit better, bigger, um, and they slot together like this to create. Let me just show you to create a network, and it's going to be variable, right? Every time you set this up, it's going to be different because you're going to pull these out randomly. Each server has a kind of a, sh a short name. This one's we've got virtue, freedom, salvation, 
faith. You know, this this is going to look different every time you play. Okay. You know, you can create holes in the network if you wish. You know, stuff like this could happen. All right. So lots of variability in in the setup right from right from the get go really, and these are sparks. These are the the renegade countermeasures. These are the things that the network's going to be laying down. So the commands you run, the programs you create, are going to put contaminants on the board, they're going to cause contaminants to flip, you can move around, you can, um, where's Hetty's avatar, you'll have an avatar, this is kind of like your current part, you know, your, your current partition we call this, you know like if you're on a computer and you're in a file system, you know, you can change directories and, you know, where are you currently, is kind of like that, that file system thing, I'm in this directory and I'm going to change directory, I'm going to change directory, okay, so that two-dimensional file structure is a three-dimensional representation on the board. It's, it, it was interesting doing that conversion of a, you know, what, what a computer network looks like and how would that visually appear. So the idea is that the where you are currently you know, accessing files is the partition you're currently on, on the server you're currently on. Okay, and these are different servers networked together. So commands, play your cards, create complex commands, to create combinations of you know things that you're going to execute move the here do this push this here turn this into a you know a you know contaminate it modify it change it into uh, you know another virus or a data node or what have you okay these are ports these are data ports they allow you to um, hop across they're kind of like shortcuts to other parts of the network, okay, these ports. So anyway, loads of stuff to reveal and I'll show you all that in the in the playthrough video. Well thank you for sharing my excitement that it's seeing this for the first time. Even though this is just a you know print on demand prototype, this is uh, it's just amazing to see all the artwork in print. Look out for it this summer on Kickstarter and look out for a gameplay demonstration on Box of Delights soon. Thanks for watching. See you next time.